Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Akoseni uh, from Vision Eye Doctors. I'm here uh, to host the EYE show today with you. And we're going to be talking about the topic of myopia and myopia control. So what is myopia? Myopia is when you see better up close and your distance vision is out of focus. Essentially, the eyeball, if you think of it like a camera, is a longer than average, so light falls in front of the retina. Someone who has perfect vision without any correction, glasses or contacts, the light falls right on the retina. So that's when they're corrected. For someone who's far-sighted or hyperopia, the light falls behind the retina. So then they have to accommodate and focus to see things near. Now, why does this all matter? Okay, so myopia has been on the rise in the past 50 years. Since 1970s, about 20% of the population were myopic. Now, coming forward to about 2010, about 42% of the population has become myopic. And we're predicting by about 2050, um, there's going to be about 58% or more of the population going to be myopic. That's a pretty good amount of people who are myopic. So myopia by itself is not a bad thing. You see better up close, right? You don't see as well at distance. There's some things that can go with that. Um, you know, there's some pros with it. But the main cons that we're concerned about the quality of life. As we go forward, our myopia progresses, especially when it starts at a younger age. The higher degree of myopia, the higher risk of diseases early on in life. So, for example, um, if the prescription is a mod minus two, you can see pretty well from here to here, and, and your screen is pretty good. That's a pretty good ideal myopia. You don't have an extreme number. You can see better at distance, but nearsightedness in general makes the eyeball longer, and it can increase risk of floaters, for example. It can lead to retinal detachments. It can lead to cataracts in the eyes, where the lens becomes cloudy at a younger age. Um, it can also lead to more changes because of stretching in the back of the eye, which can lead to glaucoma or maculopathy, specifically myopic maculopathy later on in life. Typically, we should see this at older age, people are 60 or more, when we say macular degeneration, glaucoma. Now, we're seeing this younger people having that. So when we looked at studies, we see and notice that the higher degree of myopia, when you go from two to four to six to eight, it exponentially increases your risk of these diseases. So this is the reason why you want to talk about myopia and to reduce the risk of myopia. The risk of the burden that is going to be later on in life, not necessarily right now. What happens with myopia, these diseases increase uh, later on, that's why most people don't realize it. They're like, well, I'm going to get LASIK. I'm just going to, when I turn 21, get LASIK and my vision is going to be fine. Did you know if your numbers are extremely high, when you get to degree six, seven, eight, or nine, you might not actually have enough corneal thickness, which is the front window of the eye, to get LASIK. Even if you get LASIK, you still might not be able to correct uh, fully your prescription, and your physiology doesn't change. You still are at risk of getting glaucoma, cataracts, myopic maculopathy, which is similar to macular degeneration, you lose central vision, or retinal detachment, which leads to permanent blindness. So these are all serious conditions, and that's why we want to take it seriously and prevent that. We're seeing more younger and younger kids. This week alone, I saw multiple kids, four to six years old, coming in with nearsighted prescription. And on top of that, they're getting stigmatism. So they're also getting distortions, which before age eight, if it's not corrected, they're getting more uh, reduced quality vision. If those kids are not being treated properly, they might actually end up with what we call amblyopia. Okay? And that can also improve to reduce the quality of life later on. If you don't see 2020 or better, for example, you can't be an astronaut, right? That's what everybody wants to be one day, right? Everyone's going to space. So we got to think long term for about these kids. So usually the causes of these is what matters. So why is it that in the 1970s, about only 25% of patients were myopic? Now it's almost double. So most of this has to do with today's age. Now, what are we doing different? Back in the 70s, we we'll probably spend more time outdoors. When you're younger, you're playing outside, you know, more sports, so you got natural exposure to distance, uh, natural lighting outdoors and doing distance activity. More kids are now spending time indoors. And what are they doing indoors? Well, going forward, 80s and 90s, they were probably just playing, you know, board games and other things. But now we're seeing kids are spending from a very young age, two years old, they're being on screens. And how big of a screen? Very small screens. Those small screens are making their eyes over-focus and accommodate. So the muscle that's inside here is kind of stretching inwards. 
you add the hormones that make them taller, combined with this, it makes the eyeball longer again. That's what's the mechanism that we think is happening, or at least part of the story. Genetics is uh, a large factor into this. If you are myopic, or you're, uh, you know, and, and if a parent, mom or dad is myopic, and they can pass those genes on to the kids. One in four kids who are myopic, their parents were never nearsighted. They didn't have myopia. So why are those kids turning that? And this is where environmental factors come in. So, some things to look at are basic things. Kids need to spend more time outdoors. So main cause is kids are not spending time outdoors. So we got to get our kids outdoors more, doing distance activity and natural lighting. Kids are holding things too close. When you hold things this close, there's a muscle inside the eye that has to accommodate and focus things up close. So that strains the eye. Eventually, that makes the eye longer. We need to hold things further away. Whenever you see your kid holding the phone or iPad, even a book, drawing this close, either they're not seeing well, they're bringing this close, or it's not natural, so they need to hold it back. There shouldn't be a reason why they hold it this close. Tell them arms not the way. They need to take Frequent breaks from near activity. Every 15 to 20 minutes of near activity, they need to look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds or more. That's the 20, 20, 20 rule. So every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds or more. That's really, really important. Okay, Even for adults to do that because some adults are getting eye strain. Um, the other causes are we're seeing some of the other teenagers spending time indoors in low lighting. When you have a low light, the pupil in the eye has to get larger. So more light has... It can't get enough light, so it puts strain on the muscle to focus. It has to adjust, focus, strains the retina, and eventually leads to that. There's some theories behind that as well. Lack of sleep. You know, some kids are staying up late and not getting the eight hours or more. The younger they are, they're supposed to get more than eight hours of sleep. You know, we want these kids to be off the screen. If they're not sleeping and it's dark outside, you can't go outside, what are they going to do? They're going to be out there on screens up close, most likely, or watching TV. Now, TV, I would argue, is better than up close because at least it's far away. But still, you need to reduce those screens. Okay, You need to overall try to get them to sleep more and sooner and earlier. The other thing we need to look at, okay, what can we do in the office for you? These things were to summarize with things that we could do, you could do on your own with your kids, is reduce their screen time. Now, one last thing that I wanted to add to that is it's a recommended kid, younger kids especially. We're looking at 12 and younger, and even kids 12 to 16 should try to reduce their screen time to one to two hours a day and 15 minutes at a time outside of school activities. Realistically, they're spending a lot of time on their Chromebooks and other things at home. During COVID, they were online the whole time, so they had a higher increase uh, risk of myopia, which we saw right afterwards. All these kids came in were nearsighted in our clinics. You can still, they're still in person, but they're still spending too much time on their screen. So since they're on screens for school, you need to make sure you do the job at home and reduce that. So less time on screens, two hours or less if possible outside of school work, 15 minutes at a time, no more than 15 minutes, so follow the 20-20-20 rule. Kids should spend about 14 hours a week outside, divided by seven, it's two hours a day. It can be spread out throughout, throughout the day. Um, you know, doing distance activity and natural lighting as much as possible. We understand it's cold, so find the right balance between that. And COVID safe, of course. They need to have good lighting. Make sure you don't sit in a dark room looking at things up close, be it a phone, computer, or writing paper. Make sure they're holding things further away. That's really also important. So these are things that you could do on your own. You also need to make sure you bring your kids sooner for an eye exam. If you notice the kids are blinking, squinting, um, they're rolling their eyes. This might be a sign that there's something going on. Maybe they have nearsightedness or farsightedness. They might have some sort of stigmatism um, or other issues that may be contributing to this to get worse. Okay, so make sure you bring your kids in for an eye exam. It's recommended. You know, if you have those symptoms, definitely bring them in. If you don't see any issues before age six, they should have a baseline eye exam. So a baseline eye exam, we expect the kids to have about a little bit of farsighted prescription, okay? So we want a dilated eye exam. And when we dilate the kids, the muscle inside our relaxes. We're naturally actually born farsighted, where our eyes are focused behind, behind our retina. And if kids are about plus 75 or more, that's excellent. So that means they have a less chance of becoming nearsighted or myopic as long as they follow those basic rules. 
But if they're not following the rules and they're plus 75 or less by age six, that means they have a higher risk of getting nearsightedness. Okay? So it's really important to get those kids in here to get a dilated eye exam to find out what's going on, make sure what is their baseline. If they're not corrected to 2020 by that age, now it could be a learning issue, you know, is there astigmatism again? You need to get their vision to be corrected because if they're not focusing properly in one or both eyes, that might also contribute to some eye focusing issues and eventually possible progression of myopia. Now, if your kids are nearsighted already by that time, then that is very concerning, okay? This is where you're gonna be, have to make sure that you bring your kid in on follow-ups once a year or once every two years is not acceptable okay they may need to be seen uh, every three to six months to monitor their progression if the rate of change is half a doctor or more then we may need to start looking at well what are the th treatments we can do besides all the basics we talked about so things that we can do in office at home we can start looking at uh, three different options that we have four technically there's bifocal glasses that we really don't use anymore it hasn't really been effective is only works for a subset of kids who have uh, fo uh, convergence uh, and, and focusing showing the muscles basically most often we don't prescribe that as much but sometimes we do it in addition so bifocal glasses are not effective as very under correction is not effective either so the best thing to do is uh, the only FDA approved treatment is a contact lens called my uh, what this does is called it's a dual focus lens uh, when we correct vision in general with glasses or contact, light comes through the center, through the pupil, comes to the central area of what we call the macula to get the best vision. So that gets in the center. But the issue with this, when we get glasses, this is flat. And contact is a little more curved, but still flatter for light falls in the center there, but on the outside portion falls behind the retina. So that's called peripheral defocus. So that actually stimulates the muscle to be straining and focusing too much throughout the day when they're doing excessive near activity. So our goal is to curve the front and back so they match each other. So we put what we call a little bit of plus in here. If some of you may have worn multifocal contact lenses, similar concept to that. And we give you curvatures in the front that are in relation to the back. So we call that peripheral to focus, and that reduces strain on the eye. And that's shown about 45 to 55% efficacy and slowing the rate of progression. We know we cannot stop myopia once it starts because of all the physiological factors. We can't take away all the new activities. So these are tools to slow down the myopia. So if a kid is changing one doctor a year, we may be able to save them from becoming a minus 6 to 8 by from age 6 to 18 by giving them these contact lenses to maybe their prescription will be half as much progression or even less. So this is a soft contact lens called MySight. It's a daily disposable, which we want, and it was studied for many years. Um, giving kids to 8 to 12 is the most efficacious. Um, and uh, FDA recently actually approved that. That's the only FDA approved treatment. We also have two other methods that we've been used for years. It's not still fully FDA approved, but even though it's been used for many years and approved in other countries, um, it's, one is called atropine eye drop. It's a diluted dialing eye drop. So just like we do a dilation, we take that form, uh, called atropine, and we dilute it to a very low dose. We come to 0.1, 0.25, and 0.5. And depending on how rate and what rate of progression there is, we prescribe that either daily um, or multiple times a week to help the kids reduce their focusing muscle. And we don't know the exact mechanism, but we've seen that what it happens is it helps reduce the strain on the retina and re reduce the rate of progression of myopia as well. Same thing, 45 to 50%. So um, the third option is something called a night lens or orthokeratology, which is actually a lens you sleep in um, to reshape the front curvature of the eye to match the central area to near. But what we use is called a reverse geometry that changes the shape on the outside portion of your cornea to give that peripheral defocus, like just like the my side, to give you a little bit um, uh, more f curve here so we can help slow down the prescription as well, as well as correct the vision. This is the non-surgical way of correcting vision. Um, that's also not FDA approved and there's limits to all of these powers, how much can be corrected. So if a kid's eyesight is already higher than a certain degree, like already six, this may not be approved. There are some off-label contact lenses that does the similar job, soft contacts. Most of those are monthlies um, or three month replacements. These are programs that we put your kids in to try to coach them and help them reduce their myopia and stop the myopia progression. This can be done, tools that we have in office that can be done. 
So not everybody needs these treatments, and there is risk-benefit ratio for some of these. Uh, contact lenses, of course, have risk of dryness, um, infections if you're not being using them properly. But if you use properly and we monitor them properly, they do really well with this. Uh, atropine eye drops, you know, it has a dilating effect, so make the people a little larger. Um, most often we use the lower doses. That is still efficacious, doesn't have that as much. So you use the drop at night. So in the morning when you wake up, you don't have, you might have a little blur early on or a little bit different sides in people, but most kids do pretty well. Sometimes we have to add bifocal glasses in there if we see there's any issues with focusing when we want to get the best efficacy. And we do many all times mix these treatments. Sometimes we give the atropine drop with either the mycite um, or the custom soft lenses that goes with that higher powers or um, the atropine with the ortho K to get the best efficacy. There's nothing that replaces kids reducing their screens, spending more time outdoors, having good lighting. These are, again, the things that you could do on your own. It's really important that you bring your kids in for eye exams. Um, you know, pediatricians do an excellent job of screening for kids for their eyesight, but sometimes there's certain things that we don't know. We want to assess the risk so uh, of what's going on, especially if you're already nearsighted. One or both parents are nearsighted. There's a more than 50% chance that your kids are going to be nearsighted at some point, so you should make sure you bring your kids in um, for an eye exam. Uh, and even parents who are not nearsighted at all, who do not have myopia, still have the risk one in four kids can become nearsighted. So please make sure you get a dilated eye exam from your kids before age six to make sure there's no health-related issues with their eyes and also they have the best optimal vision. You can bring your kids in for a myopia consult. If you call our office um, with our call center, just tell them that uh, you know, we're interested in getting a myopia consult. Both me and Dr. Bob Akosini, um, optometrist here at uh, Vision Eye Doctors do that, and also Dr. Lorena Riveras, another optometrist at our office that does the myopia consult. If you're not sure what you need, you don't need a myopic consult, just come in for an eye exam. Any of our colleagues here can see you. Start with a baseline. If needed, then they can refer you appropriately to us. Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Have a good day.